If you need to generate PDFs in your Rails application, Prawn is a great way to go. There used to be a plugin called Pronto as well, which makes Rails integration a bit easier. However, that plugin doesn't work with the latest Rails version and isn't well maintained. Thankfully though, adding Prawn directly to your Rails app isn't that difficult. Let me show you how here. I have a Rails application here which shows information about a given order which has been placed, including the line items which are inside of that order. Now what I would like to do is offer a PDF version of this order information so that the user can print it off or download it if they want to. And we will use Prawn for creating that PDF. So the first step here is to go to your gem file and then add the Prawn gem into here, and then run the bundle command to install it. And then next we need to tell Rails about the PDF MIME type, and we can do so inside the config initializers directory. Notice that there's a MIME types file inside of here. If there isn't one, you can just create one. And so we can just uh, create a MIME type here by saying MIME type register, and we wanna make an application slash PDF MIME type with the name of PDF. So this way, it ensures that our Rails ap application knows how to respond to a PDF request. And then next, go into the controller action that you want to return a PDF version of. In this case, it's the orders controller show action that I want to uh, return a PDF version of, and that was the page that I showed you. And inside of here, you just add a respond to block, and it takes a format object. And then for the format, we want a, an HTML version and a PDF version. So in here, we just need to send back the data for the PDF document. And you can do that with a call to send data, and then just render out the PDF data right here. Now, so if we first need to make a PDF document in Prawn, and we can do that with a call to Prawn document dot new. And then you'll need to tell Prawn what to put on the PDF. So in this case, we'll just simply add some text saying hello world. And then we can render that by calling PDF dot render. Now, once you restart your Rails application, you should be able to access your PDF document by simply appending .pdf to the URL here. And then once we do that, it'll render out that PDF and notice that it added it to our downloads right here. So we have a PDF here. And when I open up this file, you can see it's a PDF document that simply contains the words, hello world. So that works. It would be nice though if our file name was a little more descriptive. Now that send data method we're using in the controller accepts several options, including file name, which will allow us to change that name. So back in our controller, I'll add that file name option here. Maybe say something like order with the order number itself, which is at order order number, uh, .pdf. Now another good option to pass is the type because it defaults to an octet stream. So we can say type is application slash PDF. And then you may also wanna pass in the disposition option if you want it to render inline instead of just downloading it. So that way it displays directly in the browser window. So let's try this again by adding .pdf to our URL and notice that it shows directly in the browser here instead of being downloaded. Now I still need to fix up this PDF to display the order information, but before I do that, I want to add a link here so that I can easily access the PDF without going directly to the URL. And so I will add this to the bottom of the show template here, which is the page we were looking at. And so I'll just add a quick link to and say uh, printable receipt, it's a PDF format, so the user knows. And for this, I need to access the order path, and pass in our order, and then I need to tell it to add the PDF extension, so it's going to be the PDF format. And you can do this by simply specifying the format option and saying PDF for this. Now when we reload the page here, you can see we have a printable receipt link. Clicking it takes us directly to that PDF, awesome. Now we can focus on improving this PDF file here so it actually contains the order information. Now we could do all of this inside of the controller here, but I don't think that's very clean. So let's move all of this into its own class. And what we can do is make a new directory here under the app directory called PDFs, and then make a new file here. Let's call it orderpdf.rb. So I'll create that class here called order PDF, and notice that PDF isn't all capitalized because uh, this makes it so Rails can easily find it. You may wanna rename this to P order document or something different if that bothers you. And I'll just have this inherit from prawn document. And you may also wanna change this because if you don't like using inheritance, you may wanna just delegate off to a separate prawn document that you instantiate inside of here, but inheritance makes it convenient to access all the methods inside of here. And then in here, I'll make the initialize method and then just have that call up to super. And then in here I can have it render out whatever we want. So we can say order goes here. And this means back in the controller, I can, instead of instantiating a simple prawn document, I can instantiate an order PDF, just like that. 
Now you may need to restart your application so Rails finds that PDF's directory, but after that, just hit reload in the PDF here, and then it should render out order goes here, yay. So this means we just have to fill this with information about our order. But how do we know exactly how Prawn works and what options and methods we have available to us? Now Prawn has two good sources of documentation. One is the API docs, which basically works as a reference telling you what methods and classes are available. The other is through uh, the wiki here. It is the documentation manual here, which is actually a PDF containing all in examples and detailed information about exactly what you can do through Prawn. Really awesome to uh, look through this and uh, see exactly how it works. So with those sources of documentation, it's pretty easy to just go through here and then generate whatever you want in the PDF. Now one of the things that I want to generate here is the order number. So I want to say the order number, which will be the order number, and then pass that in through here. Now one problem though is that uh, this does not have access to the order instance variable because it's in its own class. So we'll need to pass that in through here and then set it. Now we don't want to uh, pass order in through here, so I'm just going to pass in some empty parentheses. Well, actually, you know what? We can pass any other document options into here that would be passed on to prawn document, such as the top margin. We can change that to maybe give it a, a bigger top margin like that. And then back in our controller, we need to just pass in that order instance as we instantiate the order PDF. So now reloading our PDF here shows the order number and notice we have a higher top margin. Now to help keep this organized, I like to spread the PDF generation out across various methods inside of our PDF class here. So let's make an order method, order number method here, and then make that method here, and then just do the text rendering inside of here. Now there are also various options you can pass into here, such as size, uh, we can make it 30 points for example, and we can make the uh, style bold, just like that. And reloading our PDF here gives us a bigger order number. Now next I want to render out the line item. So let's make a line items method here and then define that down here. Now if you ever want to space things out in the PDF, you can use the move down method here to say move down 20 points. So that way the line items will appear 20 points below the order number. Now the line items themselves need to be rendered out inside of a table and we could do that in Prawn by simply calling table and this accepts a two dimensional array of the cells. So we can say, uh, just toss in some values here to see what it looks like. And when we reload our PDF, you can see there's our table with the various cells and values. Now to actually fill this in with the line item information, I'm going to make uh, a method here called line item rows. And I'll just paste in this method so to save us some time. Notice that it starts with the header information, so this will be the top row, and then every row after that is the order line items map, so it's going to create a two-dimensional array here of all the line item information that we want to display. So reloading the PDF gives us this. Looking pretty good, contains all of our line item information. Now you can further customize how your table looks by passing in a block to this table call here, and this passes in a table object. Now if you don't pass in an argument into your block, then it's going to use instance eval, and instance eval all method calls onto here, onto that table object. Now we can also use the row and column methods to scope which cells we want to change the behavior of. For example, row zero will be the the first row, which is the header, and we can say we want to change the font style of that and set it to bold. Or we can say uh, columns um, one through three, which are every column after the first one, and say so we want to align those to the right. And we can also set the uh, row colors, so we can say row colors equals, and then that, and that will alternate between those two colors in the rows. And finally, it's a good idea to set the header option to true if you have the header as a first row, so that way it'll repeat that row if it goes on to the next page. So we can see those changes by reloading the PDF here. And now notice that the header is bold, the prices are right aligned, and we have alternating colors. Yay, it works. Now you may have noticed that the prices are not properly formatted here. They don't have a dollar sign and they're not always two decimal places. Now it would be nice if we had access to our view helper so we could call number two currency inside of our class and properly format our prices. Now the order PDF class doesn't have access to those view helpers, but we can pass in our view context from the controller here so that it does. So for the second argument here, I can just pass in the view context in the controller. And then in our PDF class, just pass in our view 
and then set it to an instance variable so we can access it everywhere. So now with this in place, I can generate a price method here, which accepts a number, and then I call view dot number to currency and just pass in our number. So I can use that price method wherever I'm actually displaying a price, such as our unit price and inside of our full price here. Now reloading this PDF, and now properly formats our prices. So that works. Now there's one more thing I want to add to this PDF to make it a bit more complete, and that is the total price. So I'll just add a total price method down here, and then have it uh, first move down about 15 points, and then have it render out some text here. So we want this to say total price, and let's set the uh, order total price in here, and format it properly. And let's change the size to about 16 points, and change the style to bold. And there we go. So now reloading our PDF here shows our total price down here. So that's looking pretty good. I'd say this is a good finished PDF because it pretty much mimics what we have here on our page. Well, that's it for this episode on Prawn. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are several alternatives to generating a PDF instead of Prawn. You may want to use, for example, PDF Kit to convert HTML to a PDF document like I showed in episode 220 but it all depends on your needs for your specific application.